It was a good restaurant. I always liked it. I liked the atmosphere, the food, and the acoustics. So many restaurants these days use this unfinished kind of ceiling that kills the acoustics and magnifies and reflects the noise level to the point where you can't enjoy a quiet conversation over dinner. This was an old house that was converted into an upscale steakhouse. The individual rooms have been preserved, so there are seven separate dining areas on two levels each with about six tables well spaced apart to provide a nice degree of intimacy. It was a lovely place for a romantic dinner. Unfortunately, I did not enjoy a romantic dinner tonight. I was dining with my wife, Sarah. She and I were seated at a table in one of the lower level dining rooms. She was fidgeting, rarely looking at me, nervous, and afraid, but I could also see the determination. I hadn't uttered a word since arriving here, and only what was necessary to be seated and ordered drinks. As I perused the menu, trying to decide between the filet with blackberries, and the beef tornado with Bordeaux sauce, I sipped my single malt on the rocks and regarded my wife. She was still a physically beautiful woman, intelligent, successful, and until recently, a woman I was willing to die for, but I no longer had passion for her. She didn't know about the change in my attitude, but I would ruin her plans for this evening by telling her this news among others. Cell phone rings. John, it's me, John Archer Boyle. 49 years old, and a reasonably successful software executive, married for 28 years to the stranger now sitting across from me. Yes, Sarah? I sighed softly. I, uh, I wanted to talk to you about something. Well, this will be a nice change, Sarah. She looked at me with mild indignation curving her mouth and annoyance. I hoped my attitude would calm her nerves and make her finally spit out what I knew she wanted. Yes. Thank you for your sarcasm, John. It always drew me to you. Thank you, Sarah, but in this case, I wasn't being sarcastic. I didn't elaborate. I held her gaze making another shot of whiskey until she looked to her left and saw a waiter approaching. I didn't wait for the lady to order first as I usually did. Instead, as he approached the table, I handed him my menu and ordered the filet with blackberries and Spanish rice. Sarah discouraged by my apparent disregard for generosity quickly looked over her menu before deciding to order a salad. Who orders a salad at an award-winning steakhouse? When the waiter left, Sarah fixed her gaze on me again. John, I've been thinking a lot lately about you, about me, well, about us, and I, uh, I wanted to discuss my thoughts with you. By the grace of God, there's an immeasurable difference between too late and too late. I replied. I'm sorry? Sarah asked. A day late and a dollar less? I sighed. You are always ready to shout in the rain, Sarah. Keep shouting. You're not being very helpful, John. I'm serious. What did you want to talk about, Sarah? Uh, well, I there's no easy way to say this. I swirled my glass slowly brushing condensation off with my thumb and fingers on either side of the glass as I turned it. Just tell me what's on your mind. Well, I want to try a period of separation. She whispered. Nothing permanent, John. Just an opportunity for me to explore my thoughts further. I'll get the separation, no. She suddenly looked directly at me shocked. A strand of her blonde hair fell across her face as she threw her head up too quickly to hold it back. I'm sorry. What do you mean? No. Breaking up would do us good, it would help me fall in love with you again, and, Sarah, I don't want you to fall in love with me again. I smiled, not a smile of love or triumph or condescension, but an affectionate smile, a smile you could use to tease a child arguing passionately about ten more minutes of playtime before bed. I have no patience for your attempts to justify your bad behavior, Sarah. You need separation so you can explore things with my replacement. So which came first? Falling in love with me or the permission you gave yourself to seek out my replacement? What the hell are you talking about, John? I didn't replace you, and I'm not looking to replace you. You have to agree that our marriage has become stale, and I think some time apart will help us determine how we can fix it and get back to where we were. Yes, 
Sarah. Our marriage is stale. In fact, it's been stale for a long time, and for the past two years, I and only I have been trying to change that. Unfortunately, for us, until recently, there was only one person working on our marriage, and now there are three. Of course, these three are working in different directions. I raised my hand to forestall the objection I had anticipated. You've replaced me, Sarah. You cheated on me, and now you want me to agree to an arrangement where you can explore this relationship further. You want to separate to explore your relationship with Dan, not your relationship with me. I'm not gonna let that happen, Sarah. Now she was angry, twisting the napkin in her hands and glaring at me. She hissed softly. You're wrong, I did not cheat on you with Dan, and he is not your replacement. Are you telling me, Sarah, that you haven't slept with Dan yet? But you definitely cheated on me with him. And you replaced me with him. She looked uncomfortable. Keep your voice down, John. There's no need to broadcast our problems. Why, Sarah, you've already done it? Tell me, who did you discuss this separation idea with besides me? Now she looked very uncomfortable. Well, I may have discussed it a couple times with Dan and just at that moment, our entrees arrived. And discussing our marital problems with Dan before you discuss them with me isn't cheating on me? Coming to some decision about our marriage with Dan and then telling me not asking me, but specifically telling me your decision is not cheating. Dan contributes more to my marriage than I do. She remained silent, seating with rage as the dishes were set out in front of us. I winked at the young serving girl who looked a little awkward herself. Sarah hissed at me again. You make it sound so vile, John. Dan is my friend, willing listener, and counselor who has been nothing but kind considerate and helpful. He's someone I can rely on. He understands me appreciates me and doesn't judge me. Our waiter came over to check on our well-being. Is that disgusting, Sarah? You're an adulteress. You insult my intelligence, our marriage, and our past, and you've ruined our future. Dan is trickier than a boiled onion, and he needs to be peeled. I would have thought you'd cheat, not cheat. Yes. Thank you. My dish looks wonderful. I chirped to our waiter, as he waited patiently for me to cut my filet and agree that it was cooked as I requested. I don't appreciate what you're doing, John. Sarah clearly felt out of place discussing this so openly. I'm not a cheater, I'm not a cheater and you're wrong about Dan. In fact, I think you'd like him. He's a lot like you in a lot of ways, John. Well, I'm glad you see Dan and I as interchangeable, Sarah. You'll never know how pleased I am with that. I think you're crazy, and for the record, in every relationship that matters, Dan and I are nothing alike. I don't get into other men's marriages to ruin them. I don't fuck other men's wives, and I certainly won't play his games. You cheated on me, Sarah. You come to Dan with your problems and your victories you talk to him about our personal lives. You seek his advice, his company, and his companionship. All the things you've stopped sharing with me I looked at the shocked expression on her face, took a bite of the filet, and chewed it happily, put the fork aside and took a sip of water. I raised my eyes to Sarah who was looking at me thoughtfully. Obviously, this news has hurt you, John. I didn't intend to hurt you. Did you? Damn it, Sarah, you're just out of your mind. You knew full well that cheating on me would hurt me, that's why you kept it a secret. You didn't intend to hurt me? Well, you also didn't intentionally try to keep me out of harm's way. I pushed my plate away pulled out my wallet and tossed $200 on the table. Getting up from the table, I drank the rest of the whiskey, looked at Sarah and said, I'm not going to allow a separation, Sarah. I filed for divorce. We divorced. Sarah resisted stubbornly demanding counseling and ridiculous conditions she refused to sign the divorce papers or bargain in good faith, demanding that I meet with her to discuss our marriage. I refused. I told her I would talk to her after the divorce was final and not a second before. I wanted to avoid a contentious divorce so we could be civil with our children and grandchildren but I wanted a divorce and I finally got one. We split everything in half and I left. 
Sarah sent me a nasty note demanding I explain why I gave up on our marriage and didn't fight for her. How's that for that level of insanity? In response, I sent her a picture of her having sex with Dan. She graciously sent me that picture three days after I left the restaurant. When we met for dinner, she had not yet slept with Dan. It had been a full two days since our date. What restraint? I never got a response from her on the subject. I don't date a lot. I am not a Casanova and as long as I am from time to time dragging my ashes, I prefer my own company or the company of my children, grandchildren, and close friends. At first, my children were on Sarah's side. They didn't understand what Sarah had done so wrong, I felt that I had failed in my role as a father. After explaining my position to them, I asked them that if their spouse clearly stopped loving them and started a relationship with someone else, would they accept it? Would they agree to a separation so that their unfaithful spouse could explore an adulterous relationship without the guilt and inconvenience that a spouse is likely to cause? Okay. I couldn't. I didn't. Sarah gave up any serious attempt to resolve our marital problems, and instead of discussing them with me, she found someone else to confide in, someone else to discuss the future of my marriage with, and that was simply unacceptable. Eventually, my children understood, and our relationship improved. While their relationship with their mother deteriorated a bit, Sarah and I are both less happy and happier at the same time. We are less happy because we are alone, but we are happier because we were able to find a way forward on our own. But we have moved forward. Sarah remarried and divorced again within two years of our divorce. No. She and Dan didn't get married and never slept together at all except for that one time. I don't know or care why. I didn't get married again. I retired early and moved to a rural area where I remained to this day. Happy that I don't have to waste energy on a woman who doesn't deserve it or want it, but I missed the woman I married and what I thought we could share together. I mourned the loss of that while I celebrated the escape from an exhausted marriage to a woman I no longer knew respected or loved. We had many good years, but they faded away and Sarah eventually left. I was the one who pulled the plug on our marriage, but she was the one who fired the shot. Marriage is hard. Divorce is hard. Life is hard. 